Hello and welcome. Welcome back to the Joy of Code. This is Michael again. Um, it's been a while, a um, few weeks since the last episode and um, it's time to make another one. I've already got a couple of questions from viewers asking whether this series will continue, so don't worry. It will. I'm not I'm not stopping. I haven't stopped. Uh, I was a bit busy for a bit with work and, and um, being out of the office. So I had a few other things to do, but I won't stop doing this. Um, and in fact, I will um, try to put a few episodes out um, over the next week or so and see how that goes. So we are back again um, and we are back with a new thing that I want to start and do more or less regularly now and that is answering viewer questions. In the comments on the blog there were a number of questions that came up. I've got now two or three questions outstanding that I haven't answered and I want to start answering some of those questions in videos. So um, often, you know, these answers are actually quite interesting. The questions are interesting and the answers um, allow us actually to learn quite important and interesting things. And so I have decided instead of just writing a short paragraph with a solution in the comments every now and then when a question sounds really interesting to pick it up in a video and make a video response about that and make an episode. So this is the first of the viewer question videos uh, and hopefully there will be others. So if you want to know something, um, write your question in a comment to the blog. I'm actually reading them and I may answer it. I may not answer all of them straight away. That depends on how it fits in with where we are up in the course. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff that we haven't done yet. In fact, we haven't even talked about loops and arrays yet and actually I'm quite surprised how long it took me to get there. We'll do that soon. Um, so if you ask something that is, you know, too far ahead, I may put that question off a little bit and, and take a few weeks or a couple of months or so until I get around to it, but I will eventually get around to it. Um, and if that question, uh, if I'm able to answer it with pretty much what we know already or close to what we know already, then I will put it in and answer it. So today, the first question um, I've got here written down three questions that people have asked and the one I'll pick is about timing. Um, there was a question from Martin on uh, in the blog on episode 15. Um, that was when we were dealing still with the trick the turtle example. Um, and the question effectively is about timers, about how to make something happen time delayed. Specifically, um, Martin actually asked um, in our example, we were eating a bug and as soon as we ate a bug, another one appeared somewhere else. And he asked, well, how can we do it so that the bug, the new bug doesn't appear instantly, but appears 10 seconds later? Um, that's an interesting question because it's actually a very generic example um, of a timer where something happens and then we want to make something else happen some time later. Um, so that general principle of building in a time delay until something else happens is very generally useful. So I'll talk a bit about that. I'll bring up the trick the turtle example again and then we'll have a look at that and see how it goes. I hope I can do that in a reasonable way. I haven't got anything prepared. That's another thing about these Joy of Code episodes. I usually don't really prepare them. I don't script them. I don't try it out in advance and that is just because I know if I do it will take me much too long and the net effect will be that I just never get around to do anything at all. So I thought, you know, I don't script them. Sometimes maybe they get a bit chaotic. So far I've usually managed to do what I wanted to do. But if not, well, I don't think there's any great harm, but at least it only takes me half an hour sitting down recording something. So let's try to get that done now. So here we have the trick the turtle scenario as we left it off. Just to remind ourselves, if I play this, I can steer my turtle um, and I can try around eating things. And when I eat a bug, like there, I, I'm now looking at eating the ladybugs. If I eat a ladybug, oh, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I probably get eaten all the time now. So what I'll do before I play that for, I just remove the snakes here so that they don't get me, so that I can show you a bit more easily. But I'm so every time I eat a ladybug, um, a new one appears somewhere randomly on screen instantly. Oh, there. So you've seen that. Um, what we now want to do is we want to put a time delay in. When I eat the ladybug, it should appear 10 seconds later. So 
let's find the code where this happens and that is of course in the turtle because the turtle um, eats the ladybug so here is a try to eat method where the turtle checks whether I can eat something and checks whether I see some letters and see it checks whether I can see a bug and if it sees a bug it does here four things it eats the bug it counts some points plays a sound and then creates a new bug and that create a new bug is where it's a method down here that's where the new bug gets created and inserted at a random position in the world okay so that's what we've got now we want to put in time delay of 10 seconds first thing to um, realize is whenever we talk about time in a game almost always it is much better not to use real time but to use game time um, real time is really actual 10 seconds so if I want to say I want to the bug to appear actually 10 seconds later in real time that's actually fairly tricky and almost never what we want what we typically want is we want to appear it sometime later in the game but the time the actual time is depends on um, the game speed it is actually game time so when for example here if I were to increase the speed or decrease the speed that time should actually go up and down with the other actions of the scenario so typically we don't want to use real time we want to use some um, virtual time that g gets kept track by the game and fortunately that is actually much much easier to do than using real time because what it comes down to is that we can just count so keeping time in a game comes down to essentially just counting at the moment we know that every actor has its act method called um, repeatedly when Greenfoot runs um, the one act cycle that is you know the time it takes for Greenfoot to call act on all the actors in the world um, is we also call that one frame so one frame is the time um, is sort of the interval where every actor in the world acts once how long a frame is is determined by this speed slider here so um, what we can do in terms of time is we just count frames so if you want a time delay let's say just we um, count to 100 say you know in every frame we count one up and once we reach 100 um, we have waited 100 frames um, and that will translate to some kind of real time so 100 frames we can experiment with how long that is maybe a couple of seconds um, three four seconds I don't know um, we can try that out but the point is it comes really down to just taking an integer variable and counting so let's look at this um, that is what we will do we will put in here an integer counter into our turtle um, make it private that's a private variable it's of type int um, and I call it um, bug delay count if I do not initialize a field instance fields um, get initialized automatically and uh, they all get initialized to some kind of neutral value if the field is an object type they get initialized to null if it is an int it will get initialized to zero so this initially contains zero if we want to we can rely on that but I won't rely on that typically it's a good idea to initialize it somehow anyway just to make sure to document your intention as a programmer but at the moment what I'll actually do is I will count backwards so I will um, say initialize that to zero oh, I can do that actually up here or I can do that in the constructor and both styles are equally acceptable I can say here but delay count is zero saying that the purpose of a constructor is to initialize all instance variables so I may choose to put all the initializ initializations together here even though I'm also allowed to write them there um, just to have them all together in one place okay so I'm starting off with zero and I say if my delay count is zero it means we're currently not um, in the delay phase counting you know waiting for ins to insert a new bug so here where was it where there is my creating a new bug and it was called 
um, from here. So instead of create new bug here now, what we want to do when we have eaten a bug is we don't want to create a new bug instantly. We just want to start the timer. Um, let's say I just call it new bug. I make a new method that initiates um, the sequence of creating a new bug and I make a new private method here called new bug. So instead of calling create new bug as I did before, now I'm just calling new bug and new bug um, is, let me just write a comment here, say initiate the timer to create a new bug. Um, okay, that formatting here is a bit out. That's how it should, oops, and void I have misspelled here. So here's my new bug. And there, all, what, all I want to do here is I take my variable here that I had my bug delay count, and I set this to 100. And 100 is an, at the moment an arbitrarily chosen number. This will determine the length of the delay and I can experiment with this number later to see um, uh, how long I really want it, whether I want to make it longer or shorter. But let's say I start with 100. So bug delay count um, is 100 um, and that means uh, my definition is whenever that count is greater than zero I am in a time delay um, counting down to create a new bug. So now in my act method here, I call check new bug. Check new bug is a method that I will make that checks whether a new bug should be created right now. And the criteria for a new bug having to be created is when my timer reaches zero. So check new bug. I will actually use my create new bug method for this and I change the name to check new bug um, and instead um, actually no let me do that differently let me make it really separate that out make that a separate method so I say private void um, just to explain what I was just thinking I thought I, I make one method here that counts down the timer, checks whether we've reached zero, and then creates the bug if we have. That would have worked, but just to keep my methods um, clean, short, coherent, I've now just changed my mind and I thought, okay, I do that in two methods. I make one method to check, count down the timer and check it, and then call this other method, create new bug, when it is appropriate, and leave that as a separate method. So check new bug. Um, this will check whether we should now um, create a new bug. So first of all what it does, it takes this variable and it says um, uh, let me see. So we test this variable. If this variable is greater than zero then I paste it here again, I decrement it. We have seen a plus plus behind an integer variable before that was incrementing the counter. Now a minus minus decrements the counter. So this will decrement this variable, bug delay count, by one. So I'm saying if it was greater than zero, then I'm counting down now. And now I check whether I have just hit zero now. I say if that is zero now, then I copy this, I cr call my create new bug and then I end this. So I think if I have thought this right through properly that this is my whole method that I need. So first of all I've got two if statements nested in each other. First one, um, let's first investigate the negative case. If the bug delay count is not greater than zero, so if it is zero as it will be at the beginning, I skip over this if statement and I just do nothing. So in the case where my bug delay count is zero as it is 
at the very beginning because I have initialized it to zero at the beginning. So as at the beginning, this method will have just no effect at all because this if statement will just be um, skipped completely. Then at some stage, when I want to create a new bug, the bug delay count will be set to 100 here. From then on, every time I get in here, the bug delay count will be greater than zero. Then we go into this if statement, we decrement it by one, and, oh, I just notice I have forgotten a number there. So I decrement by one, and if we're not down to zero, nothing more happens. So that will just count down from 100 to zero. And then when we reach zero, we create a new bug and then just leave the bug delay count at zero until I eat the new bug. So let me write a comment for this to do this correctly. Um, okay, so I think this might actually be complete. Let's try that out. So and again, so that the snakes don't catch me, I just remove them so I can test my program in peace. Um, and now let's try to get a bug. I got a bug and now it's not there and a while later it appeared there. And I got one again and a while later it appears somewhere. That works. So that is good. Whoa, and now that was my end of my game. So that is pretty much the solution that you need. So there are a um, couple more things to say about this. So first of all, one thing I have said already, and that's the most important thing, whenever you want timers, do not use real time. There is a time, there is a method in Java where you can get actual real time. You can get the system clock. That is almost always not what you want. Um, deal with time by just putting an integer counter in that counts frames, that counts act cycles. So every act cycle, um, when the timer counts, you just decrement the timer by one or increment the timer by one and then you can check whether it has reached zero when you're decrementing or has reached a certain value when you're incrementing and then you know a certain time has gone up. Now, if you think that delay was too short or too long, you can change the value. That is quite often true that you want to experiment with these values and that is why it's actually a good practice not to spread these values throughout your code because now if, I, if I'm a maintenance program and I haven't seen this program before and I want to make this value sh longer, I want to make, make this time delay longer, I have to search through the code and find where it is and when I find the value I have to change it but I'm not sure whether that value isn't mentioned elsewhere in the program as well so that's a bit tedious. It is much better to declare that a constant and declare that at the top. Values like this that are somewhat arbitrary like this time delay and that someone might want to change later we should typically declare as constant. So instead of using 100 here I just um, delete this and I uh, call this bug delay. So I just give it a name, bug delay, and I copy this here, and then I create a constant here. And a constant, remember, is declared with private static final um, in front of the declaration, and then the rest looks like a variable declaration. I just say int bug delay is 100. And so as a matter of convention, constants are typically written in all capitals. And then I use an underscore if I want to separate two um, words in it. And they are declared static and final. So now, by having this declared here, all the constant values in my program are at the very top of the program and they're really easy to change. It is especially important because sometimes these constant values are used more than once in a program text and then you have to go and search through everywhere where they are used um, and that can be really tedious and error prone. You can't just automatically search and replace every mention of the number 100 because the number 100 might be used for something else. So you have to very carefully read your whole program if you sort of intersperse the numbers in your program. So you essentially want to define the number only once at the top and then use the named constant everywhere in your program and that is much nicer. Okay, that was essentially the um, explanation of how to do a timer. 
And with that we are almost done for today, except that things are not actually quite as straightforward as they seem. Uh, we are now getting into the tricky um, area where making some changes to our program can actually introduce fairly subtle new bugs. If you think about it carefully enough, there now actually is a bug in our program, or probably a bug depending on what behavior we would want. If we assume that the intention is that we always have the same number of of, of bugs, not not errors, but ladybirds in our program. Um, so we had two in our example there, and that it should always be two, and every one I eat should come back. That is now actually buggy, uh, in the sense it's wrong. Um, and it takes a, a second to think about it to, to discover where the problem is. If you think about it, the problem lies in the, f in the case where you actually eat the second ladybird while you're in the delay phase of the first one. So you eat the first one and before it reappears you eat the other one. Um, if you think that through you will find out that actually you lose one of them. Uh, you will only get one back. Uh, so while the principle of the timer was done correctly we actually have to now be very careful and we are introducing effects that may not be intended. That's quite a tricky one and I'll leave that up to you to figure out how to fix that if you want to do that um, or I might get around to it in some later episode. But that's one thing to keep in mind that we can actually have only with a solution we have done only one single timer going at the moment and if we want two going in parallel which we would want if we eat two ladybirds then this all becomes a bit more complicated. Okay, but that's enough for one episode today. I'll see you soon again. Until next time, bye-bye.